Hello, I'm talking to you today from one of the interstitial sites in the body-centered cubic structure. Now, it might look as though there's a lot of space in here, but there really isn't. From what we've done previously on the packing efficiencies of metal structures, we know the body-centered cubic structure has plenty of open space, potentially for interstitials. 32% of the structure is not taken up by atoms. But we're going to see the actual size of these interstitials is very small. And so while the hotel may look large and spacious, in fact the rooms in our BCC hotel are extremely small. Let's begin by looking at the solubility of carbon in iron, carbon steels. Here is a phase diagram of that system. Here we're plotting the composition of carbon versus temperature. Pure iron undergoes a transition from face-centered cubic at higher temperature to body-centered cubic at lower temperature at 912 degrees C. The higher temperature phase, the FCC phase, has a fairly wide range of solubility, or at least up to 8% carbon and the carbon is entering the interstitial octahedral voids of the FCC structure. It's more than suited in terms of its size to those voids. However, let's look at the lower temperature portion of this phase diagram, which represents in this green region the solubility of carbon in body-centered cubic iron. And we can see essentially it's almost zero. So again, the packing in BCC is less efficient. There's more free space. You'd think on the one hand there'd be more room for the carbon interstitials. So why is the solubility of carbon reduced in this more open structure? That's the question we'll attack in this video. For our close-packed metal structures, FCC and HCP, we know there's one octahedral interstice per atom, ideal fit with a radius ratio, of 0.414, and two tetrahedral interstices per atom that are smaller with an ideal fit of 0.225 radius ratio. So where are the interstices in BCC structures? What types exist? How large are they? And how many are there per unit cell? Well here's the BCC structure. We know atom contact is along the body diagonal. And we can see along the edges here, where the atoms are not touching, we can see those voids. And so this is one set of voids, halfway along the cell edge, that look as though potentially they could incorporate some interstitial atoms. Let's take a look at those set of voids that are along the cell edge, noted here. And we're going to see that they have six neighbors. Two are closer along the cell edge, these orange atoms. The other four nearest neighbors are the atoms here in the body centers. They're actually further away. And so if I draw multiple unit cells of the BCC structure, we can see here is my interstice. Above and below are two of its nearest neighbors, and here in the body centers are the other four. So it's in the center of an octahedron, but this octahedron is distorted. The bond length from the interstice to the orange atom is actually significantly shorter than the bond length from the interstice to the green atoms at the body centers. Here's a polyhedral view just showing that my octahedron around that interstice is compressed along this axis. It's far from ideal. Well, now we can use simple geometry to figure out what the radius ratio would be for a perfect fit of an atom into this interstice. Because it's distorted, to fit it in there, it's going to be constrained by the smallest distance to the neighboring atoms, and that's the one along the cell edge. As we mentioned, BCC, the larger atoms, which are called radius r, are in contact along the body diagonal. So I know the length of the unit cell, a, is 4r over root 3. 
Now if I use geometry to evaluate the atom contacts along this shorter interstice atom distance along the cell edge, I will see that A is equal to R plus another R plus two lowercase r, where lowercase r is the radius of the interstice. And so here we'll find the relationship between the radius of the interstice and those larger atoms for a perfect fit is equal to 0.155. So the radius ratio, 0.155, is three times smaller than an octahedral interstice in the FCC or HCP structure, where we know it's 0.414. We can also quantify the lengths of the longer bonds in this six-fold coordination, this distorted octahedron. As we saw previously, we have two shorter, four longer bonds. For the shorter bond, that's equal to 1.155 R. Well, from simple geometry again, now we'll focus on the longer distance from the interstice to the green atoms, which lie at the body centers of thy unit cells, we'll find that the longer bond is equal to 1.632 R. So there's a significant difference between the length of the two of them. But again, its occupancy is going to be constrained by the shorter bond. If an atom goes into that position, can it accommodate such a short bond and such a small radius ratio? The BCC structure also contains a set of tetrahedral interstices. These tetrahedral sites lie in the faces of the cube, and they can be found at this position, one quarter and a half, right here. And there's several of them. Here we can see the four nearest neighbors to such an interstice. Below here is my polyhedral view outlining the tetrahedron. The tetrahedron is actually not ideal, it doesn't have ideal tetrahedral angles, but at least these four bond lengths are equal. Again, using simple geometry, we can show that for a perfect fit into this position, the radius ratio would be 0.292. In other words, the radius of the tetrahedral interstice is 0.292 times the radius of the larger atom. So this is a bit of a surprise. In the body-centered cubic structure, the interstice with the smaller coordination number, 4 for tetrahedral, is actually larger than the radius of the octahedral interstice with the higher coordination, the reason being this distortion of the bonds. But nonetheless, even the largest interstice in the BCC structure is much, much smaller than the octahedral holes in face-centered cubic structures. And the bottom line is that carbon simply does not fit into BCC iron. So let's return to the solubility of carbon in iron. Here are the atom sizes. 1.6 angstroms is the radius of iron. The radius of carbon is 0.7 angstroms. And so the actual radius ratio is 0.437. So in the FCC structure, this provides a good fit into the octahedral holes. And we'll get interstitial solubility, as we mentioned, up to approximately 8 atom percent. But the BCC sites are too small. Carbon does not fit. And that is the reason that we see no interstitial solubility in this region of the phase diagram, where iron wants to transform to the BCC structure but it cannot accommodate any of the interstitial carbon that was present at the higher temperature in the FCC structure. As we'll see later, this has major ramifications for the mechanical properties of iron-carbon steels. Well, we know, however, the BCC structure has more open space, and yet the interstices are smaller than the FCC structures. How do we reconcile this difference? Well, there are more interstices in the BCC cell. In fact, for these distorted octahedral holes, there are six per cell, three per atom. Remember, for FCC, it was one per atom. And the tetrahedral holes, there are 12 per cell. 
there are two atoms in the unit cell. And so now we have six tetrahedral interstices per atom. And so while the voids are much, much smaller than the FCC structures, there are many, many more of them. And that is why, or that reconciles, the larger total space that's available in BCC. It just comes in much smaller aliquots. And the small size of the interstitial sites in the BCC structure is what limits the interstitial solubility. For the FCC and HCP structures, we used the interstices to build ionic structures by placing cations into the octahedral and tetrahedral positions. You can't do the same thing for BCC, which is why we didn't pursue it at the time. And there are no sets of ionic structures that can be built by placing cations into the interstices of a BCC structure because they're too small. What can the octahedral carbon interstitials do then if the iron atoms want to convert from their high temperature FCC structure to a body centered cubic arrangement at lower temperature? They could complain, or they could leave. Let iron convert to its BCC structure, and the carbons instead go and form a separate phase. In fact, an iron carbide, Fe3C, which is called cementite. Or they could convince the iron atoms to do something else. Maybe there could be some kind of compromise where iron could partially do what it would like to do, which is approach eightfold coordination in a body-centered cubic structure, and carbon somehow finds a way to expand those interstitial sites. We'll see that this is also important, this compromise, as it leads to the formation of a very important phase called martensite. Either way, the decision that they make has enormous consequences for the strength, hardness, and ductility of carbon steels. And assessing the impact of that decision and which of these options they choose will be the subject of a second video where we look at the effect of the cooling rate on the structure of these systems and their mechanical properties.